over these rocks here. These rocks in the background. And I'm also going to take that beige color and put it down into the water here. As the sort of the reflection zone. And now I'm going to start <clears throat> I'm going to start to draw the water. There is um, though Water, there is no one size fits all for handling water. So there's not like the way to draw water. Sometimes water is really light. Sometimes it's dark. Sometimes it's orange. Um, not polluted water. You're looking at just normal fresh water, but the lighting, you look at that water is orange. That water is purple. You'll see all sorts of crazy colors uh, in water. The best thing to do is to look at that body of water that's in front of you, and your brain is initially going to tell you that water is blue. I don't believe it. What I'll do is I'll make a little frame like this with my hands and I'll just look at a little strip. I'll look at a little strip down the lake that's in front of me and go, as I go down, is there a change in the color that I'm actually seeing? Actually, yeah, it's more dark blue up here, almost purple, going into a blue. It's getting even greener towards the bottom here. When you restrict yourself to a narrow strip like that, <coughs> very, very helpful. Another thing that you can do is to take that narrow strip and just draw a little water strip on the side of your paper. Just draw a little vertical column showing yourself what the water really does here. So you can play with your watercolors and see how does that, how does that work, how does that respond. Um, but now I'm going to draw that, I'm going to paint that here. But on this day, the sun is out, it is sparkling on the water. Um, I've got the reflections of, the, uh, of the, the granite rocks that are sticking up out of the water. And I've got this color change going on, and I've got ripples out across the water. There's all this crazy stuff going on. How do you start? What do you do? I'm going to show you one approach to doing that. And in doing so, I'm going to do something that is, uh, to a watercolor purist, this will make their blood curdle. <laughs> so if you're watching this at home and you're watercolor purist, uh, my apologies. But I am going to... I'm going to use something called a resist, and that, what that means is it's going, to, it's going to put something down on the paper that is going to make it really, really difficult for watercolor to cling to that page. And this is, um, you know, for instance, what some people do, there's this stuff called masking fluid that's sort of like, I don't know, uh, rubber cement, and you paint it on your painting. And then you paint over it and it doesn't adhere to the rubber. And then you, with this special kind of masking fluid, you can then peel that off. And it leaves the paper surface there. It doesn't tear up on the paper. Um, for me, that takes way too much time. I, I get much more impatient. So here is a quick and dirty, but unforgiving, once you do it, there is no going back way of messing with... Um, uh, similar effects. What I'm going to do is I brought with me a white crayon. Like batik. Yeah, just like batik. Mm -hmm. Remember those Easter egg things you do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're going to do the Easter egg thing. Mm -hmm. So here we go. I'm going to put a horizontal line here, kind of sketchy, near the base of these rocks. And then out in the water, a few places, there's going to be, we're making a little line, dot, 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 dot. Just little sparkles in the water. And don't make them um, evenly spaced all over the water. And um, a little bit will go a long way. And if I don't like it, I'm just out of luck. Now, what I've done is I've paint-proofed those parts of the paper. And now I'm going to come along and uh, first make a blue wash on this paper. I'll then wet and wet add some purple at the top, and I'll wet and wet add some green down at the bottom. And I will get my watercolors, the ripples and the, re the, the, the um, those highlights and those reflections will show through. And the... 
Um, and then I'll add ripples once that dries. So here's what I'm going to do. I like to test my colors before they hit the paper. Do, do you want to be in a place that you can see this, Pax? Okay. You okay? So, I want it to be a little bit darker. Um, different sorts of pigments. Um, you know, we find with, with some pigments, like you, you do your watercolor painting and it just looks really, really pale. Sometimes that's the pigment's fault. You can't get any darker with that. Um, in my palette, I've got a few colors, like this blue over here. This blue can look almost black. See how nice and dark that is? It's an endatherone blue over there. I'm going to make this rather dark water because I want the contrast to test my paint before it hits the paper there. I want the contrast with these boulders. So I'm going to carefully kind of come along the edges of these rocks, work around them. Here, I'm trying to, in any marks that show through of my hand, I want those to, I want to make sure I'm keeping those very horizontal. some of those highlights coming through. And did you put resist over your rocks? Well, I went around those rocks. I put some resist in the water below those rocks. Um, with the, mm -hmm. and see that how I just paint over that and I get those little reflections? Mm -hmm. But you're still basically doing the wash technique. Um, I'm just being more sloppy with it. Okay. I know I can really get away with it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's got mm. a few little highlights out there in the water. Mm. Mm. I'm going to get a little bit more purple here. And put that in the water towards the back. I'm going to get some green. Toss that over here. That might be a little bit stronger than I need. And white water that started to do a back run in the middle of my painting. I'm going to try to get in there and correct that. And there we go. Now I'm going to let that dry. And when that's dry, I can add other details directly on top of that. Now what I'm going to do is uh, hop back to this drawing here. It's now dry and so I can come along on these trees here and just off them in wherever I put my paint. My paint stays right there. It doesn't blend, it doesn't bleed, it doesn't run. None of that sort of thing because it has, it is on a dry surface. Dab my brush. Oops, dab it too much. Make this stuff back here a little bit more pale. Same color. I'm 
not getting Get a little bit of purple. Water diluted. Maybe kind of a purple and gray. And just put that across. And that was getting closer to done. To bring these trees in the foreground into even closer focus if the darks in those are pushed a little bit further. Here again, this is just a green, but it's a green that can go really, really, really dark. That's the nice thing about having some sort of higher quality pigments, is that you can push your darks with those sorts of colors. And there's a little California hillside. Mm -hmm. I'll do one more thing to it when those trees are all dry. In the meantime, I'm going to jump back to here. This thing is now mostly dry. So while it's finishing drying, I'm going to put in a few shadows on the sides of the boulders here. And back here. And I'm going to put in a few dark areas in some of the cracks. So with values, sort of really kind of keeping that simple, but it goes a long way there. There are my rocks in the foreground. Maybe a few little dark accents back there. Toss them back. There are ripples on the water here, and I'm going to draw in some of those ripples. Um, but I'm waiting for the whole page to be dry. I test it. It's dry enough. Another way of testing dryness is you tilt it like this. You're looking at, for if you can get any kind of glisten of dampness off that paper, if you can get that glistening dampness, then uh, it's, it's still wet. Um, so ripples, when I look at them, they're made by little waves, and the little wave has you know a high part and low part on either side. Um, so often the ripples will have kind of this thin, thicker, thin look to them. You'll see that on a lot of of, of ripples. Mm -hmm. Best thing to do is actually to look at what is coming across you, <laughs> across the, the, the lake that you're looking at. But I see something like this fairly frequently. Um, and so I'm going to add those into here. What I'm going to do, the ones that are closer to me, they're going to be bigger and further apart. They're going to be closer together and smaller as they go back in space. And that's going to give me a sense of depth with that. So in the foreground, what I'm doing to get this sort of eyelash line is I'm just with the brush tip lightly, then I press harder, then light again. And that makes that wide and narrow, wide and narrow. That's just how hard I'm pressing with the tip of that brush. You don't have to worry about screwing up your brush tip when you're pressing? Nope. This is not, I'm not smashing it into the paper. This is just, um, you know, it's, it's, it's all in the sort of the, the normal sort of level of, um, of, of, uh, of pressure that you do when you're painting. Back here, they're now getting smaller, they're getting closer together. Same thing back here.
less detail as I go further away. So, I'm sorry, I missed it. Did you, are you putting in an additional layer or are you taking some away with some water? No, I, I'm, I'm adding, I'm adding in, I've got paint on my brush and I'm adding a little, bit. little blue lines. You want to see that back there? Yes. Let's pass that back. Oh, I see. So to get that, um, it's those techniques we were looking at. I did a, uh, first a, a, a wash, and I didn't have to really be uh, really careful about making sure it was perfectly even. Um, while it was still wet, I put some um, darker blue-purple into the top part of it. While it was still wet, I put some green, yellowish green, into the bottom of it. And so those blended together. Um, those are on top of the resist made by that crayon. Um, and it's showing up with sort of pale um, rock color because I had put I'd drawn that little reflection zone in the water. So then when I have the crayon on top of that, those lines mm. show up being rock color as opposed to being wet. Mm. Um, and then I put in my little eyelash lines, um, more heavy in front, lighter getting towards the bottom. And so that is a uh, flat wash, then wet and wet on top of it, um, also using a resist. This was a graded wash. We looked at lifting out. We looked at glazing those layers, so putting stuff on a dry surface. Um, now that my trees are dry, I'm going to do one last thing on my California landscape there. I'm going to pick up some of this purple shadow color that I have and put in uh, some trees here and some suggestion of a slope. I find purple a much better color for my shadows than um, if I'm going to work, you know, reach for some generic color to drop in a shadow. I'll, I'll drop in a little bit of purple. It works, plays very well with yellows. Um, and there's my little California mm. landscape. I mm. <coughs> um, want to show you one other thought about um, making watercolor work for you. And this is um, has anybody ever in uh, a watercolor painting that you've done or another drawing that you've done? Have you gotten colors that are really muddy? <laughs> Does that happen to anybody? Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to get you know some purple, violet, you get this sort of grayed, mucky thing. Yes. We hit mud a lot. Mud happens all the time. <laughs> And you're thinking, like, why do I keep getting mud? Why do I keep getting mud? And I'm going to try to match that color really carefully. And so, you know, you're thinking about, you know, does this have more blue in it or more red in it? What do I mix in here to kind of match that color? And again, it turns muddy. And how many people have drawn a muddy sunset? <laughs> right, those, you've got those pink clouds against that blue sky, and you, and you all of a sudden you've got mud. What's going on? Well, here's the good news. The reason you're getting mud, it's not you. Right? It's not you. It's that the way we have been trained to think about the way that colors mix is wrong. And will guarantee you getting mud. How many people have learned um, I, uh, that there are three primary colors and they are red and blue and yellow? You heard that? <laughs> All right, how many people have tried to mix color using that system? Anybody? Yeah? How many people got mud? You got mud? Oh, yeah. All right, so, so here's, here's the thing. Um, I, mean, I, I even got this, now I have two beautiful little daughters, and, I'm, and I was reading um, Amelia books last night before she went to bed, <laughs> and she brought out, she bought out mouse paint. It's this really cute little book. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a sweet little book. These little white mice, they find these jars of paint, they dance in them, and they make all the different colors. And it's a way of teaching people how colors mix. And it's great, except that that red 
blue-yellow color theory does not work. It's a bold statement, right? So I'm going to go out on a limb, and what I'm going to do here is, first of all, I'm going to prove to you that red is not a primary color. Red is not a primary color. And blue isn't either. And once I've once and for all proved that to you, we'll look at how, why, using those, you get a muddy color wheel. And how, if you think about colors just slightly differently, you can precisely get the colors that you want, and you will say goodbye to mud. Sound good? Yes. <laughs> all right. So here we go. I'm going to first swim over here, get... 